What's up, fam and crew, creeps and peeps? It's been a minute since I've recorded a new video. Most of the haul videos you guys have been seeing and whatnot have been recorded many, many years ago <laughs> or a while ago. Uh, so this is going to be a free comic book day 2024 and life update. So haven't made the move to the new place yet. Uh, still just kind of bumming around doing what I do. I'm going to use my uh, robot roll call blanket as a back backdrop. Uh, so back, it is May 5th right now. Back in March, my kid and I went to Denver. And I might throw up a couple of pictures here and there to go see one of my favorite bands, the RX Bandits. So this is their 2003 album, their resignation, which came out July 15th of 2003. I remember buying it the day it came out. This is a 20th anniversary reissued vinyl that they had, that I pre-ordered, and it finally came. So I, of course I have the original vinyl from 03, which is worth a decent amount of money. But this is a new one that came out. So they're doing a 20th anniversary tour for this album, even though they did it in 2024, and the 20th anniversary really should have been 2023. But and then they did a reissue of their 2006 album, and the battle begun. Uh, this was originally released on vinyl as well as two as double 10 inches. So now they've reissued it uh, as a 12 inch. So both these covers were done by an artist painter named Aaron Nagel, who is a semi quasi friend of mine. I've come to know him over the years. Uh, extremely talented guy. This painting is called Predictable that he did in 2003 or 2002 to 2003. The band has liked it and used it on their album cover. Uh, more about that one day. And this album or this painting was called Look Left. And so I pre ordered these. We got these delivered. They had them available at the show, but I already had them on pre order. Uh, but this is another painting too, done by Aaron Nagel. And it's actually just a t shirt of that. But picked those up. Okay, spoilers. The original painting for this that Aaron Nagel did, I own. I've owned it since 2005. So, yeah. And then I ordered this a while back. It's a limited edition drive through Records 26th anniversary EP boxed set. I haven't opened it yet. So it's got the starting line, the hopes of starting over EP, Finches, Falling Into Place EP, The Movie Life Has a Gambling Problem EP, Hidden Plain View, Hidden Plain View, Halifax, a writer's reference. So there's limited to 500 of these. Uh, I ordered it, I don't know how long ago, it took a couple months for it to get here. But I have all these albums on CD, of course, I bought most of them when they first came out. That one I think I have a vinyl of. Those I'm not sure. I have the Finch EP on, or on vinyl now because of this, but then I have what it is to burn the full length on vinyl that I bought back in 2002 or three. That's pretty cool, probably stay in the package for now. Uh, then also, where is it now? It's down here, damn it. It's covered up. This is a box of stuff going to storage here soon. So, I'm not a board game guy myself, but this is a New York game called Miasmat Miasmatic or Miasmatic Mayhem. Uh, it's got a 2020 uh, copyright date on it, but this game actually just came from the, just j literally just got released. Uh, I started working at a new place called Nerd Nation back in late January, early February. It's an Amazon eBay reseller. Uh, there's a YouTube channel as well if you're interested in that kind of stuff. So I'll, I'll throw a screenshot of it up right here or something. Uh, but I work for them during the days. But some guys I work with designed and put this game together. So it's Kansas City based. There's a lot of Kansas City related elements in it, but it's pretty neat. So they're looking to try and pimp this game out. And I bought two copies, one for myself to keep for the archive and one I gave to my daughter's family because they're board gamers over there. So Miasmatic Mayhem, check that out. Uh, like I said, yeah, I'm working for a new company called Nerd Nation. I'm building and running their trading card, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Digimon, uh, Magic the Gathering, like a... I don't know, TCG player sales and whatever else. I've been archiving 
organizing, archiving, and uploading all their, this dude's like 200,000 trading cards that he has. But so more about it, check out the channel. I'm, I'm in one or two of the videos recently. But another thing I started doing is I started doing this again. Uh, these are film frame bookmarks. Back when I was a film projectionist, I always had tons and tons and tons of film trailers and whatever. So I started doing little projects. So like this one is it's Fight Club, got Harry Potter, that's Halloween, Star Wars, X-Files. So I take like film trailers and or this actually came from a 35mm feature film print of Halloween that was pretty much water damaged and completely unplayable. But I, I've been cutting out all the good chunks and I laminate them like 10 frames at a time and then punch a little hole at the top so you can put a tassel in there. But I started selling these on eBay again. I sold these on Etsy and eBay years ago, but I started doing that again recently. So inquire about those if you're interested. Well, the biggest thing is my daughter and I have been getting back into comic books. So I broke out all my comic books and we've been going through those. So then here's a bunch of old comics from the 90s that I collected. These are magazines that maybe we'll go through one day. More comics, more comics. I've been buying a lot of omnibuses and hardcovers. A lot of the newer X-Men stuff. Comics. More comics. More comics. So, um, what I've done through, I pulled out all the old comics from when I was a kid. Organized those. And now I'm kind of going back and filling in some gaps and trying to get my hands on new interesting things. So, we'll dig into those here, I guess, now. But yesterday, May 4th, was Free Comic Book Day 2024. So my daughter and I went out. Uh, we did make a stop at uh, Vintage Stock, and I picked up this CD, Ice Nine Kills, Horrorwood. A new friend of mine named Rory, who has a YouTube channel called Gory Rory, so I'll throw that up right here. Her and I might be working on a project here in the future. This is a band she really likes, very horror movie related. A guy named Spencer Charnas, who was actually in town here in Kansas City at uh, Comic-Con. Uh, we went to the Comic-Con, got some good stuff. My daughter, my nephew... And my daughter's friend met Jamie Kennedy. I met Agent Barbeau again. So maybe I'll throw up a picture of that. Uh, throw up a couple pictures from Comic-Con right around now. So so uh, Rory's a big fan of Ice Nine Kills and Spencer Sharnas. So I, I decided to check that out. And this is something I got the other day. The X-Men Omnibus. This is the original stuff from the 60s. So I'm actually going back and been reading these like one or two issues a night. I'm actually going back in time and reading these comics. Because my thing back in the 90s like, with like the Jim Lee era X-Men stuff was I collected all this shit. You know, X-Men number ones. I have like all five different versions and a bunch of different whatevers. But I never really read them. I just collected them. So now I'm actually making myself read them and filling in some gaps and some storylines. So uh, I've been digging through this one. And as I, you saw already... This is the 2019 Jonathan Hickman one. Pretty much a lot of this is all Krakoan era, what they call the Krakoan era, my modern stuff. These are just some free ones my daughter got from school, and these are doubles of these two. Because it's funny, is I got this one, this one, one more, House of X, and that. I got, I had these already, but then I bought these two and like three more for like 140 bucks off eBay, and then sold that one for 50 and sold that one for 110 So I basically sold my doubles of those and which paid for the whole thing, so then I got the other ones for free. So that's pretty sweet. So uh, I forget exactly where we, we started off. We started off our day. We went to Pop Culture Comics in Overland Park, but there's a line out, out the door. So we darted down south to a newer shop called Nerd Nostalgia, which has been around since January. We stopped there, made some purchases. Uh, then we went to Bebop Comics in Overland Park, made some purchases there, and then ended up back at the end of the day. Uh, back at Pop Culture Comics and spent a good amount of time there. And funny enough, I ran into a guy named Andrew who I ran into at my city thrift job last year who's in a local Kansas City guy who's in a bunch of movies, but he's in all the uh, Chris Seaver movies. Yeah, you know, He's in like Terror Blood Far Lake. He's in Taint Light. He's in uh, the new series they're trying to do called Wellsville Nights. I'll throw up some images of those as well, but cool dude, local Kansas City-based guy. So, I forget, maybe I'll remember where some of this came from, but a lot of free comic book day stuff, and then I ended up picking up X-Men Omnibus Volume 2. So this takes place right after that one. So, there's discounts on Omnibuses. These things are pretty pricey, but for free comic book day, there's heavy discounts, so I picked that up at Pop Culture. 
My daughter's been really big into Neil Gaiman, so I picked up this one. The Facts in the Case of the Departure of Miss Finch. For her birthday, my daughter just turned 16 a couple weeks ago, I got her the big Volume 1 Absolute Edition of Sandman. So she's been getting into Neil Gaiman and Sandman. And just last night, we did comic book day all day, and then we went home because we were house sitting, dog sitting, the Huskies, and I showed my daughter The Crow for the first time, the 1994 Crow, which is weird to think about that that movie's literally 30 years old this month. So getting into X-Men, I'm still big on the Krakoan era stuff. I kind of want to collect all the hardcover Krakoan stuff and all the individual issues. So I got these X of Swords. I got Creation, Stasis, Destruction, and the Handbook. So this is a 22-part series that spanned all the different X titles at the time. So I picked up those four. And I got the Crow Dead Time trade paperback. I think I got this in Pop Culture. Or no, I got this in Bebop, maybe. I have all the individual issues, which is a crazy story I'll go into another time. But So I have all the individual issues, and now i got the trade. And I picked up this hardcover trade paperback of Masquerade. A new series, a newer series, which like a secret stash press from Kevin Smith teamed up with Dark Horse. So this is the first one. I think there's two volumes out already. Then at Pop Culture, they've been having a lot of uh, deals on these magazine-sized comics. So I got Rogue State one and two. I think these are like two bucks a piece. Got a Vicious Circle. This is Boom. That's Black Mask. This is Boom. Then Distillery, I assume that's what that means, Distillery. Uh, Gone, books one and two by Jacques, or Jacques. He did a uh, Batman Who Laughs comic that my daughter's reading right now. Then he also did a Batman uh, One Dark Knight series of the Black Label uh, DC stuff. That was really cool. I got those, and I got this one called The Devil's Cut. It's just I've been trying to buy a lot of these bigger uh, magazine-sized books, because in that box down there, that's a bunch of magazine sized books of like horror magazines and whatnot. So I've been, I have a lot of the magazine sized bags and boards and top loaders that I need to fill up. So I'm check into those. I don't know anything about those, they just seemed interesting. Then going back into the 90s, I've been trying to like fill some gaps. So this is Generation X, this is the Wizard, like negative one issue or half issue that you can only order through Wizard Magazine. And then I got Excalibur 71 with a holograph nightcrawler holograph card on it this is one maybe six of these there's like an x-men one uncanny x-men one a wolverine one something else throughout the fatal attractions uh run storyline every x book had a, an issue that had a holographic card on it so i got the gambit one is one of the x-men ones there's a wolverine one i think so i'm trying to collect all those and then going in back into the day doom 2099 number one it's got the foil edge. Now, back in the 90s when these first came out, I had Spider-Man 2991, Punisher 299 number one, and X-Men 2099 number one. So I've been trying to get all of the 2099 number one issues. I think there's like Ravage and maybe one other. I forget. But I'm going to get like the first issues of a lot of them, maybe complete the, the run. I'm not sure. Or I might just wait till the trade comes out. Then I got this Jane Silent Bob uh, miniseries one of four. I do have... This is a alternate a variant cover i do have another edition of this and then when we were in uh colorado we went to mile high comics which is a crazy big massive comic book shop if you've ever been there and while we we're there i found i forget what issue issue one or issue two or something like that of this series it was still in the bag with the trading cards, so I thought it was interesting, so I picked it up, and then I found this one at Bebop's, and I have two out of four. Uh, I'll go into the story another day, but uh, somebody dropped off a massive amount of old Crow comics at Bebop Comics, and I ended up buying pretty much damn near all of them, but I found this one, Crow Hackslash. It's a 1 to 20 variant, and the Crow City of Angels, this is one of the... Uh, cover variants it's like a three issue run i think i have all but one of them now i have like the three regular like photo covers and the three kind of artistic covers and then this came from pop culture it's 
House of M five issue mini series. So this is all bagged up as one. So got that. And I've been trying to go back and fill the gaps in the Age of Apocalypse comics. Back when the Age of Apocalypse happened, it was like an alternate future or alternate timeline where like uh, Cable became X Man, uh, X Force became Gambit and the Externals, Generation X became Generation Next, Uncanny X Men became like Astonishing X Men, X Men became Amazing X Men. All the titles changed. So I had the Gambit and the Externals because Gambit was always my favorite. So I've been trying to fill up all the rest of the Age of Apocalypse runs. So I have X-Man. Because then they did trade paperbacks of all these combined. They had like gold foil covers. So I have a couple of those. There's like, oh, in fact, or X-Caliber became X-Caliber, spelled differently. And then X-Factor became Factor X. So they just kind of, again, just changed the names a little bit. But so I got this four-issue run of X-Man. So now I just need to track down the gold foil trade paperback to go with it. And as I said, Generation X became Generation Next. So I got these four. Oh, and then the Wolverine became Weapon X. That was the other one. Which I have those. I have Gambit the Externals. And I have something else. But there's, I think I just need Excalibur and all the Factor Xs. And then getting into some of the free comic book day ones. You got a One Piece book. Which I got two of those. Because guys I work with are into One Piece. I'm going to give those away. And my boss at Nerd Nation is a huge, huge Pokemon dude. Like, literally, check out Nerd Nation's channel. His basement, where we work out of, is like a Pokemon museum. So I picked up one of these for him to add to his collection. And this is Absolute Power Special Edition, Free Comic Book Day, Energon Universe, Transformers. We got a Mad Book, Blood Hunt, Ninja Turtles. Barbaric. I think it's a different yeah, second copy of Pokemon. I might keep. So we went to th three different shops, so they had this pretty much the same freebies at all the different shops. So we were able to pick up multiple ones. James Tinian is a writer, comic writer I'm getting in to enjoy from uh Something's Killing the Children and another title another series called Nice House on the Lake, which is kind of interesting. Marvel Voices. Gan Gannibal. This was a freebie, The Me You Love in the Dark from Scotty Young. Uh, this is a series. This Okay, that was the end of the freebies. But this series just started back in like March, I think. The Fog. It's like a continuation of the movie The Fog. So I've been picking these up. Uh, this is Issues 3. just came out. Luckily, this is the last one they had on the shelf at Pop Culture. And it's funny enough, the guy Andrew from the Chris Seaver movies, he was there and his lady friend was buying the same exact thing. So there's one on the shelf. So I was able to get that. So now I have three i think it might be limited to four or six issues uh but it's been pretty interesting to read and then andrew told me about this series called the nasty which is like somehow kind of a play off of the video nasties uh, all the horror movies in britain in the early 80s that were called video nasties so they only had issues five and eight but andrew suggested it so i'm, I'm going to give it a shot i'm going to fill the fill the gaps and track those down okay and then at uh Bebop, they had a bunch of other free comic book days from previous years. So that is Bob Berger's issue. Enter the House of Slaughter, which is uh, from the same world that Something, Killing, Something is Killing the Children is from. Secret Wars, the Jonathan Tickman version. And these are just some... Uh, let's see, what are the other freebies? Tons of Strange was a freebie. Boom, 10th Anniversary Extra began as a freebie. And these are just some random tiles I picked up from my kind of like a discount bin at Pop Culture. They had like a boxes in the back that's like three for a dollar. So I just kind of went through picking up just a bunch of random stuff. So this is issue three of The Devil Tree. This is issue four. So I'm going to track down issues one and two and give that a read. And this is We Don't Kill Spiders. Two, three, and four. So I just need to track down an issue one. And then this is actually House of Slaughter. Issues 1, 8, and 9. So I just need to kind of fill a couple of gaps there. I think it's up to like maybe issues 20 plus now. So well, that's my comic book day 2024 haul. So I'm going to get those bagged and boarded. So I go kind of crazy when I do it. Even if they come in bags and boards, I like everything to be uniform. So I take them out and put them in my own ones. And then I go so far enough to where once they're red, they get like a little, you know, 
tab thing here. And then once they're red, they actually go into these top loaders. So I'll do like one bag and board, but then I'll be able to fit two comics. And then there's two variants of the same book right there, but they're all in these top loaders. Top loaders cost like a buck a peach, so I think it's worth it. And maybe as comics slowly infiltrate this channel as time goes by, we'll go back and we'll tell some stories about some of the older ones. And maybe you'll learn the stories about how I came across these again after many years of them being away from me. But that's my 2024 update. Free comic book day 2024. Life update. I'm just doing the two jobs. I got the Nerd Nation job during the day. I sleep with puppy dogs at night. A lot of stuff going on. Just being busy. Hopefully I'll make the move soon. I got ideas for this new channel. And a new project I'm going to be working on with a friend of mine named Rory, hopefully. So I'll keep you updated on that. Um, so yeah. Let me know how you guys' comic book day went. Let me know what you guys have been up to. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe. And I'll see you next time.